Mr. President of the General Assembly, Mr. Secretary General, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, friends of the ocean. I would like to echo the gratitude expressed by Prime Minister Frank by Marama to all involved in uh, the creation of this conference, and I'm deeply honored to be elected as chair of the conference. We both hope that this conference will be the game changer our ocean so deeply needs. Fiji and the other small island developing states have been critical in raising the oceans to the very top of the global agenda. And we're all very much indebted to you for your tireless efforts and your leadership. Dear friends, have you ever heard of the Global Ocean Conveyor Belt? It's sort of an ocean bloodstream connecting us all. It consists of huge underwater currents flowing from depths of thousands of meters and up to the near of the surface, driven by differences of temperature and by our blue planet's rotation in space. By the north and south poles, there are four large so-called convection areas, kind of pumping cardiac muscles, whereby warm water coming from the equator cools down, becomes heavier, and sinks to the depths. The amount of water cascading at any given moment corresponds to 20,000 Niagara Falls. 20,000 Niagara Falls. Imagine that. What a tourist attraction if we could see them. So when the cold water from the poles reaches the bottom, it then drifts ever so slowly back towards the equator, where it wells up again, maybe a thousand years later, full of nutrition from organic material that has sunk to the deep seabed, which then becomes food for fish, fish that then becomes food for us humans. Friends, the ocean is more than 90% of the li living biosphere. It contains 1.3 billion cubic kilometers of water. It produces almost 50% of all the oxygen that we breathe and are dependent on on this planet. Mankind has always believed that the ocean was endless, that it was infinite, and that it would be utterly impossible for us humans to affect it in any significant way at all. But we can, and we have. The ocean is now 30% more acidic than in pre-industrial times. Big predatory fish stocks have declined between 70 and 90%. The surface waters are getting warmer. In some areas, there's more microplastics than plankton. A few years ago, an article spread like wildfire around the world. It was entitled, The Ocean is Broken. It was an interview with an Australian yachtsman who describes himself as an ordinary sailor, absolutely no environmentalist, but he sailed from Australia across the Pacific Ocean to the US West Coast. His name was, is Ivan McFadden. And he had sailed exactly the same course 10 years earlier. And at that time, he had a pleasant trip across the ocean, always accompanied by seabirds, seeing dolphins, turtles, and sharks, and catching fish for supper every day. But on this second voyage, he describes the ocean as a desert. The birds and dolphins were gone, and during the entire voyage, McFadden only managed to catch two fish. What he did see was rubbish everywhere, enormous amounts of rubbish, ranging from telegraph pole poles to toys, fishing nets to car tires. The only life he saw was gigantic trawlers working day and night, glowing like cities at the horizon in the nighttime. When McFadden is asked in the interview how all this made him feel, he said it made him feel sick, sick to his heart. Just a few weeks ago, we read about Henderson Island, 
an uninhabited island in the Pacific, a UNESCO World Heritage, where researchers found 38 million plastic items on the shores. So by now we know one thing for certain. The ocean is not endless. It's not infinite. But it has no borders. It knows nothing about nations. It's just one united ocean. Friends, on the 5th of June 1972, exactly 45 years ago, the first UN conference on the environment was opened in Stockholm. Back then, the Indian Prime Minister Indira Gandhi made a landmark statement linking poverty to the environment and sparking great controversy. Today, we all know that environmental protection and economic development are inseparable. Without a healthy planet, people will not prosper. Sweden remains fully committed to maintaining the political momentum created by the adoption of the Paris Agreement and the 2030 Agenda and SDG 14 and calls upon all United Nations member states as well as other critical stakeholders including businesses, civil society and academia to harness this unique opportunity and start working to make a real difference. Friends, the oceans is the reason I got involved in politics. I was fortunate enough to be elected and to play, be able to play an active role in reforming the destructive EU common fisheries policy, finally putting sustainability into legislation. I thereby know that change is possible if there's political will. That's the reason why I truly believe that this ocean conference can be the game changer our oceans so desperately need. We know what needs to be done. We know the ocean is broken. And we now need to sit down together the next five days and make the long to-do list we all need to be ticking off working together in order to fix it. This is the moment and a better moment will never arrive.